Welcome to the So Verve Lounge, a podcast for modern entrepreneurs that focuses on digital marketing ecosystems for small businesses. Join your host, CEO and marketing director, Stephanie Rubio, as she brings you marketing tips with a shot of Cafe Con Dulce. Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me on today's show. My name is Stephanie Rubio. I am the CEO and Marketing Director here at Sober Marketing Group, bringing you this week's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am really excited to chat with all of you about today's topic. So the topic is now going to be part three of a recession proving your business. This is the third installment. And this is a conversation we've had and has now become a series in our podcast because we have been, again, sharing these details with you for now, two solid years. Since 2019, um, going into 2020, I have had this urge to really have a conversation with our community members on making sure that we are on the right track for preparing our businesses for what is going to be uh, a recession. And I do believe that we will be entering a recession in, into 2023. Uh, recessions typically last two years from the time they start to the time that we start seeing that uprising again. So obviously I'm talking mostly from a marketing perspective, but also a little bit of a business perspective and what that's gonna look like um, for your marketing. Um, but also for your business, right? So I really want to focus a little bit more on the business end of things as we have in the previous episodes that we have done regarding uh, recession, uh, proving your business. So one of the first things that I want to talk about, and the entire conversation today is really going to be based on services and whether um, it's the services that we're providing customers, uh, the services that we have, you know, in our services menu, and then also uh, identifying how we be- can become more efficient in the services that we provide. So I really want to start with valuing the customer because I feel like one of the things that sort of becomes really prevalent during a recession is going to be what services we want to keep and what services we want to get rid of. And this is from a consumer standpoint. So this could be uh, buying decisions that consumers are making and what that's going to look like for them in the next two years. Okay, so if you have a product based business, you really need to start looking at your customer service and how that relates to your marketing. And I'll tell you what, in marketing, the most important thing that you can do is build trust. We have said this before, people buy from those they know, like and trust. Trust is very important, okay? They, they say, there's a, there's a quote by, I believe, Stephen Covey that says um, that when trust is low, there's a hidden tax on everything. And that is a quote that just comes to mind every single time there's conversation of, of a recession. That is the first quote that comes to my mind because it's absolutely true. Every time you feel uh, a little untrustworthy about how a company is moving, you quickly decide, I don't no longer want to do business with that company. I no longer want to do business with them. So when you are deciding and looking as a consumer, you're looking at your expenses on on a monthly snapshot, if you will, the first thing that's going to go are two things, things that are um, not necessarily Um, must-haves, if you will. And then the second thing is going to be companies that have been moving in a way that no longer aligns with your person. So if you feel some type of iffy about a company, you're pretty much going to be canceling services, right? So those are the two things. And then obviously, consumers, again, they start looking at pricing, 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 pricing. We're going to talk about that in just a second, because 
now you have to determine as a small business owner is, uh, am I going to make pivots and changes in my pricing structures? Because there's also an inflation that you're dealing with as a you know, as a small business owner who's buying product, who's buying um, wholesale, if you will. And this is specific to product-based businesses, but does not exempt a service-based business either. We're going to discuss that in just a second. But basically what you want to do is that you want to ensure that in every step of the buying process, starting in social media, starting in email marketing, starting in your content marketing, how you market your business will determine basically the entire journey of that buyer through your funnel. And we're going to have a conversation with a funnel strategist in the weeks to come because I really want them to hop on and really hit on um, the second point that we're going to make, which is streamlining your offer and how your funnel can help you with that. I'll touch base on that in just a second, but this is why that, that is important. So your copy on social media has to be aligned with your brand, hyper aligned with your brand. So by the time that buyer reaches the bottom of the funnel, there's no question because they have been building this trust in your brand and in your company, and it's easy to then sell to them, okay? So that's gonna be hyper important in the months to come. Your customer service skills have to improve. You reply to every single comment on social media. You reply to every single DM. Obviously, we're receiving a lot of spam on platforms like Instagram, Twitter. Those things are not going to change. But again, if it's someone that you know, it's someone reaching out to you, even if they are not a, you know, a buyer or even if you know you're not, they're not a customer, if they have a question to re- see where they can go, direct them to the right channels. So this is where automation will take a little bit of a front seat just to ensure we're sending people to the right place places, but you still want to get that human touch. And then you definitely want to ensure that you have your communication uh, kicked up a notch. Uh, Replying to clients and customers within 24 to 48 hours, staying in constant communication about what uh, what your working hours are, um, how people are working with you once they, you know, experience your service. You know, this is how it is to work with us. Have these things in writing, shipping policies, make sure that return policies are in place. The very basic, the very basic things now is when they matter. And I will say, for example, I had a situation um, a couple of weeks ago where a very popular marketing um, platform, if you will, they were having a sale on some products and I went ahead and I took advantage of it. I never received an invoice. And this is a big brand. This is like a massive brand. Right away, right away, I didn't receive an invoice for that. Right away, my trust is on the floor. It's to the ground. I'm starting to question then this purchase. I'm starting to question how am I supposed to trust in this brand that I just purchased these items from if they cannot even make sure to send me an invoice for the product that I just purchased. That doesn't make any sense, right? It doesn't make any any sense. So again, right away, my trust is, is I'm putting question to that, right? So am I going to buy from them again? Probably not. I will say probably not. Um, because right away I have a bad taste in my mouth. And so this is why it's important more than ever. So it was okay to sell me on a product. It was okay to um, get my attention market to me because they marketed directly through an ad, But then now that I've given you my money, now that I have invested in the service, invested in this product, now I don't hear from you. I don't even get an invoice or a receipt. Very simple stuff. Okay. So again, we want to make sure that we are doing everything we can to continue to build trust, to continue to implement positive customer service um, into our pipelines and into every touch point with a potential customer or existing customers as well. Okay. And so now we get into the streamlining of services because there has to be a conversation now on 
funnels and how that is going to affect then your business moving forward. So when it comes to funnels, funnels is a conversation that is typically had um, by ex by an expert uh, funnel strategist. And we're going to have a funnel strategist um, in a um, recession proofing your marketing and business for 2023. It's a small collective that I have put together of three entrepreneurs and they each have a uh, great, great examples of each of these three items that I've covered in or I am covering in this episode. So whether it's customer service, whether it's streamlining your offer um, through uh, a a funnel, and then also the last touch point that I'm going to be covering today, which is creating efficiency in your business. So when it comes to funnels, Um, And why streamlining that offer is so important is because you need to make sure that now more than ever, you are not confusing your audience. Now is not really the time to decide to go through this massive rebrand unless you're pivoting for the purposes of what feels good to you moving forward. Pivoting because you're scared and nervous about what's going to happen in the next two years may not be what you need to do in business. And let me just say that, and I'll say it because sometimes the easiest fixes are in doing away with things rather than just revamping altogether. And I will say, going back to that trust factor, brands specifically, and I see this specifically online a lot, is these brands that are constantly rebranding, constant the constantly going through pivots every single six months, every single year. It is nerve wracking. And I don't even know how people even purchase product from these individuals, purchase courses, uh, they purchase uh, cohorts and group coaching programs from people that are constantly making these pivots and changes. It looks very odd from a just a regular uh, point of view. Um, when you have brands that are constantly going through these whiplash pivots and changes, now is actually the time to just take a holistic look at your business from a from a, a, a wholehearted place, not a place of fear. I would never encourage a client to make pivots in their business, whether it's offers or even in marketing, when they're not 100% sure that that is something they're doing because they feel like, okay, we've been in business for five, six years, we've been in business for three, four years, and it's time to make a rebrand. But rather they do it from a place of fear. Um, That's not really the time to make those type of changes. And I will say that because when you're looking at the services and what you're providing, now is a good time to streamline that, okay? Now is a good time to say, okay, I'm providing all these different services, I'm constantly going through launches, I'm constantly going through these changes, what can I do in order to improve that? So that we have the services that we do provide, they're excellent, okay? The one of the ways that you can identify whether that is indeed the case or not is when you're looking at your funnel. When you're looking at your sales funnel, you're looking at how it is that you're taking this buyer through this entire journey and how it is that you're determining um, where they're being placed um, and, and how you're priming them to purchase from you. And this is specifically for service-based businesses is so important. Product-based business funnels are very simple um, in in their essence, right? You can make them very difficult and you can, you know, definitely map out a very um, robust, if you will, sales funnel um, because you already have a product. So as soon as that uh, that person purchases your product, that transaction creates a funnel. Um, They get receipts, they get um, thank you for your order type emails, they get notified 
provide whenever you send um, the the product, or that at least they should, right? When it's a service based business business, they often lack in that robust aspect that a sales funnel can provide. And now is a good time to implement a sales funnel that will help you and in, uh, in your business. It definitely will elevate your services. It elevates your brand and it starts to put in in front, if you will, just the difference that it is to work with you as opposed to other people. Okay. The way you onboard a client, the way you offboard them, the way that you handle deliverables, the way that you handle reporting, analytics, whatever have you. And I'm speaking as a marketer because one of the things that we have done is that we have taken very good care at ensuring that there's consistency, consistency across the board, how we deliver content to our clients, how we go through approval processes, how we go through monthly reporting, how we go through meeting agendas. Um, These things are consistent. When there's a little bit of an offbeat to that consistency, if you will, clients notice it right away, right away, which is amazing. It's a a little bit of a gift and a curse, I will say. Um, But we love it. We love that our clients are so in tune to how we do business that when they see a little snag in that in that pipeline, if you will, of communication, of deliverable uh, content, if whatever have you, they can see it. And I, I like that. I like that because it keeps us on our toes. It makes sure uh, it, it, it keeps our team on, on their feet. So it's good for us. And you need to adapt the same mentality because now is not the time to be lax. Now is not the time, again, to be lax in your customer service. It's not time to be lax in um, how you're streamlining your offer, how you have... Um, you know, how you're taking that buyer through that pipeline in your sales funnel. It is not the time. The last thing that I want to talk about is efficiency. And again, this kind of goes, it dips a little bit into the sales funnel. But again, the purpose of the sales funnel is to actually get this person from one area of your business, it could be just a, uh, a someone who's a potential buyer, all the way through to the moment where they actually purchase from you, they buy into your brand, um, they invest, they buy into, they're now part of, um, they, they have stock in your company in the in the sense of they, they're buyers, right? So Once you do that, what happens then to the efficiency? And so this is where, again, we go back to a little bit of that customer service. We did back into that first point that we made, but this is now where a good and solid CRM comes in. A customer relationship management system. You know that we are um, not only affiliates, but we are also brand ambassadors for 17 Hats. I have been using the platform since I launched pretty much. I I wasn't using anything for those first six months, if you will, but um, everything was done, you know, through Google as far as documents and things of this nature. Now, everything that is, you know, invoicing, proposals, quotes, agreements, contracts, um, everything from our podcast all the way through to our month to month services, our retainer services, VIP days, um, consulting work that we do, coaching work that we do for other agencies and with other agency owners. All of this is handled through 17 hats seamlessly. So it is efficient. Um, we're providing consistent uh, streams of communication with our clients. Um, but I also want to talk about then the efficiency from the from the uh, standpoint of your brand as a whole. OK, um, you want to start looking at how things are moving and changing in this new direction, because once we come out of a recession, you have to think about where your business is going to be. Is it going to look the same? Is it going to look different? Um Is it efficient for the time that we are in? How you did business in 2020, um, how you did business in 2010, these are, you know, even 
2015, 2016 to 2022, for example, for Suburb, things look a lot different than what they did when we first launched the agency. So you want to take stock at how efficient you're running your business, then moving forward. So all in all, I say that to say you have to make the determination of, okay, I need to make these changes because things are not running efficiently. Okay. Uh, it's taking too long for clients to get deliverables. You need to my take a, take a microscope and you need to look at every single one of these little crevices so that then you can make changes. Um, I am constantly making changes as l- as I want to say that I've, that whenever one client um, comes forward with a suggestion, I have an idea box where I mark that as, okay, client suggested this. Um, it could be in the way that we approach um, a, a deliverable, for example. Once a second client makes a similar recommendation, that's when I start implementing a, a, a potential change, okay? Because where there is one to two clients that are feeling some type of way with how something is being delivered, then I guarantee you there's more. Okay. Once that now, and I will say this, there are things in a, in a business that you will do that the clients may say, I really do not like this, but that already becomes then part of your brand. And one for us, I will say one thing that we've received a little bit of static in, for example, here at Sober of HQ, is the explicit approval that we require for our content. So in the past, when we used to deliver content, for example, that clients would um, you know, they're, they're purchasing social media, um, marketing services from us, we would create, you know, the captions and the, the we'd implement a hashtag strategy. We'd, uh, create graphics and, um, sometimes even video. We would also curate, uh, photos, whether it's stock photos or photos that we curated from a, a photo bank that the client provided to us. We would deliver all of this to the client and then the client would approve it. Um, Just replying to an email, uh, approved, this and that. Sometimes the client would approve it in our project management system, uh, which is Asana, and um, or through our uh, agency messaging system, whatever have you, right? But there was no explicit API um, approval. There was no where we can capture an IP address, where we could capture email, where we could capture the time and date um, explicitly, where the client literally had to click on a button and approve. There was never that because messages can be deleted. Um, even through a project management system like Asana, comments can be deleted. Um, emails, you know, can also um, lose kind of like that security essence, if you will. So once we decided to um, pop a lot of this stuff over to Google Docs, once they started providing approvals um, in Google Docs, now the client had to be at a desktop um, or a laptop and they would have to open this document, review it like they normally would have, but then now they have to click a button that says approve. That very simple task can sometimes be, um, it could sometimes be an issue because if a client does not have access at the time, we have to then wait, which is fine, which is fine. I will say we give clients the time to make the approvals necessary, but changes like that, they take a while to implement. So we started implementing it early. By the time three to six months rolls in, everyone's already used to this process. So when clients recommend, oh, well, I really don't like this new approval method. Again, you have to think, okay, is this something that is that we're doing for the better of the experience? Is there another way that we can do it? Either way, we have to ensure that we receive explicit approval from the client for the content. Um, Even, uh, I will say, we have clients go through a secondary approval. And this is specifically for brands like um, 
companies that are in the medical field or medical industry. We've had clients also in the nonprofit industry. And then we've had clients also in the legal services industry where these type of content, you know, because their their content pillars are how they are and their content themes are, um, you know, there's there's a lot of legality around that, specifically those in the medical industry. We want to make sure that we then get a secondary approval. So what we'll do is that we'll make sure that the client not only approves it through this document, but they also approve um, basically what would be a preview of how that post would look like on social media using our... Um, our social media scheduler of choice, uh, which is for us, Sendable. Um, so the client is sent a calendar that's specifically to their Sendable account um, where they have all those posts. They can see what the post is going to look like, like, for example, on a platform like Facebook, Twitter, um, or LinkedIn, and they will have to also approve each and every single post there as well. So is it redundant? It could be. Is it... Um, is it a, a quote unquote, a lot extra? <laughs> Maybe, but it protects the liability of the brand. And for me, that trumps what could possibly be um, a more efficient way to do it. So you have to determine, okay? And I said all of that to say, you have to determine where efficiency is going to be important and and hyper important and then where efficiency is going to become more of a it is efficient for the business that I am operating so it, what may look like completely different for another agency because maybe they're a little bit more lax in their um, liability policies for us we are very strict with our liability policies and it's something that I'm very protective with so therefore I don't mind putting a client through a two-step approval process of a of a content piece that is going to be sent on uh you know on our behalf to social media. That to me is extremely important and it is something that we take very good care of. So again, looking at every single step of how you do business is going to be vital, okay? It's going to be vital because everything will be costly for a cons consumers moving forward. Um, there's going to be that tax, like we said, there's gonna be that tax on trust. So. If they trust you, if they don't trust you, there's going to be a tax placed on the trust that they have for you. So now everything for the next two, three years, and, and listen, let, let me just go back and say, people that have been providing good service, solid products consistently for three, five, 10, 20 years, they will see very little change in, you know, during a recession. Um, Biz, small business owners may be affected in other ways. Perhaps the inflation is becoming um, a bit of an issue for them and they will have to make other types of adjustments. But when it comes to service providers or even uh, product-based businesses that provide these products, I'm talking about the service, the customer service. If you have been providing just the basic of what good customer service is, you're in much better shape than someone who is not providing good customer service, okay? And I will say that. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Again, this is now the third um, episode that we have done that has covered recession proving your business. Um, specifically now today, we're talking about services, we're talking about um, your customer service uh, and, and the customer service experience that others um, sort of go through in order to buy from you, whether it's a product or service. Um, also, we're talking about the importance of then your sales funnel, streamlining your offer and ensuring that every touch point um, in that buyer journey is something that... Um, 
is consistent with what you said you were going to do, how you said you were going to do it, when you said you were going to do it, you want to make sure that those things are consistent through your funnel. And then also creating efficiency in your business. Okay, so are you being efficient in how you are um, delivering goods and products and services to the consumer, um, then moving forward, because those three things are going to be very important um, in the months and years to come. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, you can reach us via email at hello at suburb.com or DM us on any of your favorite social media platforms. Thank you for sharing this morning with me. And I look forward to speaking with you soon in next week's episode. Bye.